Good morning, Marines. My name is Staff Sergeant Perry with Marine Corps Engineer School, and today I'm going to be giving you your introduction on soldering. So before we get started, we're going to cover our safeties that are conducted at least in this classroom, but follow to all soldering guidelines in general. So first things first, you always want to make sure you have iPro on of some kind. Okay, as well in this classroom when we're doing soldering inside, we have special specialized stations that have vents, so you always want to make sure you turn those vents on before anything else. So now we can get into those components. So first things first, I have my soldering iron as a whole here. So another safety as well, this is the part that gets hot, so please never touch that. Always hold it right here, and we'll never touch this. But that can get us into the tips first. So we use two different kinds of tips here at Marine Corps Engineer School in soldering primarily. So what we're using today is our linear tip. And our linear tip here is the one that you're going to be using more often than not, just due to the fact that it has a wider base here. And we can use it for terminals, wires, anything that is bigger in nature, because we just have a larger tip that's gonna use that heat. Okay, we also have our conical tip that we will use on here, primarily just circuit cards. But you can use it for a bunch of different things, but as you can see, the very tip there, that's just where our solder is going to be placed, so we can make sure we're putting that heat in a more specific place, vice across an entire line like that. Okay, components of my soldering iron station as a whole, we have our sponge. We've already done it here today, but you can see I have a bottle of water here, so before I even turn my soldering iron on or worry about what kind of tip I'm going to use, I'm always going to want to make sure that sponge is as wet as I can make it. But like I said, we've already done that today. Okay, and then I'm going to place my soldering iron on. Most of the time, you're just going to place it right in between three and four, because that's right at about the medium heat level that you're going to need to use solder. And since it's a pretty normal day out here today, we're just going to place it right in between them, and we're going to go ahead and place that switch on. We already have it on today, but for how you guys are going to use it, once you turn it on, before doing anything, you're going to need to wait about seven to ten minutes to make sure that your soldering iron is as hot as it can be, and you can properly use and apply that solder. The other components we're going to be using throughout this class, we have our rounded nose pliers here. Again, we'll get to how to use all of these tools as we get into the different terminals we're going to show you guys how to use. I just want to introduce you to each one of these tools. We have our just needle nose pliers, and then we have our wire strippers. And wire strippers are going to be used quite literally for wire stripping in most cases. Okay, the other things that we use here today just to actually use and apply solder is going to be our flux. We have the two different types. We have our putty flux and we have our liquid flux. There's virtually no difference between them. It's really just user preference. Me personally, I like the putty version just because it is easier to use and kind of less mess to clean up. Uh, but that's just my personal preference, so I recommend you try both and figure out which one you like the most. Okay, then we have our steel wool and like I said before, our sponge. So before we get into tinning a wire or how to use anything else, I'm going to show you guys how to properly, before using your soldering iron, what you need to do. So as you see, I removed it from my cradle, and again, never touching this hot part. Before I ever use it, every time it comes out of that cradle, I need to make sure I dip it and basically stabbing my steel wool here. I'm just trying to clean off all that excess solder or maybe oils that were on my wires before, whatever kind of impurities that were on there. After that, I'm going to wipe it on my sponge. Don't worry about being a little mean to the sponge. It is just a sponge and we can get more of those. So what I'm looking for when I clean that is that I don't see any excess solder droplets on here and that I can see a nice shine on my soldering iron, which I do, so I know that I'm safe to use it now. So before we get there, I'm going to take my solder and I'm going to take my wire. So the wire that we're using today is just going to be our orange wire or our 20 gauge wire. We're using that today so just so that way we can show you in a bigger picture. Um, but what I need to do before tinning my wire is of course strip it. So I'm going to take my wire strippers and you can see here on your wire strippers that we have our stranded and our bonded on this side. So I can actually find whatever wire gauge mine is. Like I said before, we're using 20 gauge, and 22 is the smallest or biggest, whichever way you want to look at wire gauge, that we have on these. So I'm going to go ahead and take my orange wire and place it into that hole of the 22 here. So now when stripping, I always want to do about a half an inch of excess. I'm using a little bit more today just so I can show you in a bigger example so you guys get a bigger picture. So me, how I like to strip, I'll take the back side of it here, give it a little twist just so now that I've cut that wire, 
I can let off a little bit of pressure on my wire strippers, just a little bit, not a lot, and I, my wire should come off. So as you see here, now we have our exposed wire, and so that's why we're tinning here today. So all tinning is, I'm about to show you clearly, but tinning's just gonna place a nice little coat of solder across my wire to make sure all these little excess wires here, as you guys can see, don't do something like that. So that's what I'm going to be soldering this for. But since I did that, now I'm gonna have to try to make sure I place it as cleanly as possible here. And now I can use my solder to fix the rest. So I've already showed you this part with my soldering iron in the cradle. I placed it in the cradle and I just took it back out. So again, I have to dip and swipe my sponge. And I still have a little bit of solder there. So I'm just going to repeat that same process. Okay, so now it looks good to me. So what I have to do next is before I even use my wire whatsoever, I need to either dip it in my flux or we again could pour that liquid flux over it, whichever you would like to do. Since I'm not using my helping hands, I'm just gonna simply dip it in my flux. And you don't need a lot, like that's probably a little bit too much, but I'm just looking for a nice little bit of that yellow or orange color there just so I know that it's cleaner and I've cleaned off those impurities. It's honestly going to help my solder spread out a lot more across my wire as well. So whenever you forget the flux, you'll notice very easily because your solder won't spread as easily across your wire. So how I'm going to do it today, I'm just gonna simply place them in two different spots. So again, just in case you can't see it clearly, this is my solder here, this is my wire. So I'll take my solder and just apply a little bit to that tip. What I'm looking for when I apply that solder is a slight heat bridge there, which in the Barney style of a heat bridge is I'm really just looking for a dot on the tip of my iron. That's really just telling me that there's a difference in temperature there. So I'll actually be able to apply that solder. So if you put too much solder on, you won't really be able to see a dot. If you don't put enough, you won't see any solder. So if you can't see it, we'll make it a little bit closer there for you. Okay, so from there, now we're ready to tin our wire. Before tinning, we're trying to make sure there's an eighth of an inch gap between our wire and our insulation. So I'm not gonna go right next to my insulation. I'm gonna start somewhere near the middle and always go away from the insulation when applying my solder. So here we go. And now I can go to the top and do the same thing. And now before placing it back in the cradle, I'm gonna repeat that same steps of process, steel wool, sponge wipe, and place in my cradle. So that was as my wire was cooling off. So what we're going to be looking for when evaluating your proper tinning is of course to make sure you don't have any excess solder here in your insulation. That's the first place we'll check. And so for me, I can tell that by simply trying to bend my wire and it should all bend as one complete hole. Okay, the next thing we're looking for is that you have about an eighth of an inch gap between your solder and your wire. And if you can't see that, hopefully you can see it pretty clearly. So for me, I have a little bit too much solder on here. That's not quite that eighth of an inch gap. You want a little bit less solder on the tip here. But other than that, that is our introduction to soldering and how to tin a wire.